I thought today I would paint a couple skies and also put a tree line in in the background. And I'm going to do it in uh, two ways here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the sky in the whole painting. And then I'm going to work on one half and then the other half to show you two ways of putting that tree line in in the background. I think I'm going to go with a little bit of a dramatic sky. I got Payne's gray, a little bit of ultramarine blue in it. Again, I'm going to use my mop brush. So let's just lay a sky in this whole piece. But I'm working on dry paper. So now I'm taking clear water and just hitting some of the edges. Again, like I said, I want it to be kind of a stormy sky. And getting lighter as it gets down towards the horizon. And I'm working on a three ring binder. It gives me a little bit of a slant, which helps me control where the water is going to go. It's going to go from top to bottom. If you're working on a flat surface, it can, it, depending on your paper, if it warps too much, you can have water going in all different directions. Here I've got more control of it. And sometimes I'll even put it on a steeper easel. I might put just a touch of a touch of lighter blue, maybe down here in the bottom, just to uh, break up that color. Again, my focus here is to, to put it on a loose sky. I'm going to stop right there. Now I'm working on Arch's uh, cold press. It's 140 pound. Um, and I really like uh, papers that are 100% rag because the paper stays wet longer and it gives you more time to work. Uh, if you're working on a, a lot of the student grade papers that have no cotton in them, um, they dry really, really fast and you can't, you can't do nearly as much with them. You gotta work fast and that's, especially if you're learning, that's not what you wanna do is be pressured to have to work fast. Okay, what I did is I put clear water all the way down to here. This is where my tree line is gonna be, down here somewhere. Okay, so that's my sky. That's, it's run about as far as it's going to go, as far as from the top to the bottom. Now I'm just going to take some earth tones. Let's just say if I got the cool sky, let's kind of have this be more of a, maybe a fall uh, scene as far as the colors. So I'm taking some uh, burnt umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I'll, I'll adjust the colors a little bit. I'll add a little bit more in here and there, different colors, just to break it up so it's just not monotone. But now I've got this on a slant now. So if I lay this in here, I start at the bottom. I don't want to start up here with my tree line. I'm going to start down here. And, and one thing while I'm doing this is remember your water uh, color is going to dry about 20, 25% more, lighter than it looks when it's wet. So, I mean, this looks, you know, it looks pretty good while it's wet. But it's going to dry too light right now, and I know by looking at that. So I'm adding some other colors in here. I'm adding some uh, quinacridone violet. Push it a little bit to the, to the blue-violet range. So the subtle color, since this is so wet, whatever I put in here is going to diffuse... And it's just going to show, indicate a little bit of a color shift um, as opposed to just having a flat color. So I'm putting in some cadmium orange right now. Just kind of dabbing it in. Now, I don't plan on doing a foreground. My goal here is to show you how to put a sky in, how to put trees in that are soft in the background, and then to put trees in that are a little more defined, sharper edges on. So I went wet on wet to get this effect. Again, this is 100% rag paper, so it, it dries slowly. I'm going to speed it up a little bit with my dryer. And while it still has a little bit of shine on it, um, wetness, I'm going to spritz it with a small spray bottle. And that'll just give me a little bit of texture that I wouldn't have otherwise. Okay, it's very, very wet puddled up here. And this is starting to dry up in this area. And that's just what I want. I'm going to come in here with my dark color. 
uh, the dark color I used in the sky, Ultra and Paynes, add a little burnt umber to it. And while this is damp, I'm going to have some trees coming out of the uh, this puddle down here. Obviously, as it gets up here, you can see it's more defined because the paper's dry. I'm going to go to a script brush now. This is a uh, number one script brush. Now, I hold it out on the end. If, I, if you grab it down here, you're going to try to control it too much. Uh, let's just let it surprise you and just see what kind of limbs, interesting shapes it gives you. Why I put this in while this was wet is I wanted this to just kind of disappear into all this brush back in here. I didn't want to have a dark trunk coming all the way down into this area. If I was going to put a tree down here in the foreground, well, then obviously I would come to go darker. And when it's dry, I go darker and put it in here. But right now, I'm, I'm, all I'm concentrating on is the background. Okay, while this is still wet, mostly dry up in here, I'm just going to take a brush and just take clear water, just trying to get a little more texture in there. And if you've got puddles like this, you can use a paper towel or you can use a, a brush and you can speed that up by getting some of the water out of that puddle. Okay, I'm taking some burnt sienna, some burnt umber, my original dark color in here, grabbing a little ultramarine blue. Since I'm not going to finish this down here, I'm going to test my colors on here. Let's push it a little bit to the cadmium orange side a little bit. I'm going to I drag this brush, take it vertical, and give it a quarter turn. And that way the brush will fan out like that. If it doesn't fan out, that means you've got too much water and you may have to drag it, take it vertical, and turn it again. But if you get to where you can use a very, very light stroke, just kind of a circular stroke, kind of gives some of these smaller limbs, maybe some uh, leaves that are still on the tree. If you tap something, you put something that's too dark, just kind of tap it with a paper towel. But this is a great, this, you see, this is dry brush painting. It's very, very dry on a Dry background. The only area that's wet is right down here. So I'm going to just define this a little darker as it comes out of that puddle. Take that same color I used here, maybe a touch more orange with it. Just do a little splatter. You notice I hold the brush horizontal. I don't, I don't do this and I don't do this. All it is is pumping from the elbow keeping this finger stationary. Now, one thing I didn't plan on doing, but if you have a beveled handed brush like this, a curly candle, uh, you can take this and you can pull out some light areas in this. Um, I'm not going to do many of them, but just in a couple spots, maybe just try to lighten the color a little bit, separate the color, put a few branches down in here. I suggest practice this on a, on a little piece of paper until you get comfortable with it. But that gives us a little bit more variety here from dark to lights. Uh, and that's the only detail is right here. These trees that are coming up above the soft area. Okay, it's pretty dry. There's a couple little wet spots. But now I'm going to do is I'm going over to the other half here. So the goal is here, here was to show you how to put a soft tree line in the background. <clears throat> the tendency for a lot of people is to put a lot of detail back in here, thinking more detail, the better it's going to be. Uh, but actually it becomes too overworked and it takes away from the focal point, which is probably going to be down in here. So that's how you put a soft background in. This, this side is dry now, so let's just work on this side. Again, I'm just going to continue that tree line, that uh, the other tree line here. I'm going to rinse my brush out, take clear water, or fairly clear water, just come from the top and just barely touch what I just put in. Just 
break it up so it's more inconsistent. Okay. Okay, so now instead of having it soft in the background, we're gonna have these trees with a little definition. So I'm gonna fan this brush out again. Kind of do what I did on this big tree over here in the foreground. But again, just kind of a circular motion, just kind of lay in a tree line back here. Let's maybe have one side go up a little higher, okay? So just try to envision small branches, maybe branches with a few leaves on them yet. Nothing more than that right there. Okay, let me dry that. Okay, it's fairly dry. Again, let's come in here and I kind of skipped a spot right in here. In other words, maybe there's a smaller branches or leaves or whatever covering part of the trunk. We don't necessarily see a, need to see a straight line trunk going all the way up. It can kind of peek out from behind areas. Let's go a little darker here. So it's kind of peeking out in these areas where you see some sky. And there could be some in the foreground here. Maybe there's one coming out of here that disappears. This is a taller tree, so this would be the darker tree in the picture, too. And I'll show you another brush I'll occasionally use to uh, indicate trees. Texture in there, a little splatter. A little more water with my paint, and it gives you a little quicker response there. <clears throat> Another brush now I'll use sometimes. No, I'm not worried about composition here. I'll, again, my only point here is to do the sky, how to put in a soft background, how to put in a sharp edge background by putting this on after it's dry. But here's another brush that I'll use too. It's an old uh, oil painting, acrylic uh, mop br uh, fan brush. It's an old acrylic fan brush. And I've cut into it a little bit with a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife to make it a little bit more irregular. What I'll do is I'll lay that down flat, almost flat on the paper. Let me get some colors here. Okay, what I'll do is instead of painting it like this, I'll come down in here again and I'll push it up. Let's just show you here in a little spot. You can hear it scraping the surface. Again, this is uh, Arches Rough Paper. Now this is a little darker, so it feels like it's uh, closer to us than this. This is a little bit lighter. This actually could have been done in more of a, a light blue, a blue-gray color to push it back even farther. But again, this is just the techniques I'm talking about. I'm not talking about uh, finished painting here. So now we can go back and do some of the same things we did on the other piece. Come in here a little darker. Skip in here, find out little gaps in here where we can put tree limbs coming through, peeking through over here. But that's, that's the key right there is to, uh, if you want them soft and not too important, uh, because it very easily you put a lot of detail, hard edges up here in the tops of these trees, it, it pulls the eye away from the focal point. So this is a good way to do it. Do it while it's wet. Here we waited until the background was dry, and then we put this in. 
And so obviously you got these harder, sharper edges. So I hope that helps. Thanks.